All right, so uh, I decided to get a Microsoft Surface laptop, 15-inch um, screen, something I bought, whatever. And I, I said, you know what, 512 gigs of storage is fine, but let me go ahead and upgrade this to a terabyte. Now, what you have on the screen are the items you're going to need to to do this. Uh, somebody might say, oh, I did it this way, whatever, but for me, it wasn't as smooth as other Windows installations, so I needed quite a few things besides just a flash drive. So, uh, going from top to bottom, of course, you need a computer. So, you're going to need something, whether it's the Surface itself or another laptop, to actually download the Windows installation media. And then you'll need a USB drive to, um, to house that installation media so you can then input that into the Surface. Uh, I also have an Ethernet to USB-C adapter because when um, the installation completed, there weren't really any drivers uh, included that worked with the Surface. So the Wi-Fi card did not work. And since there are no Ethernet ports on the laptop, uh, I needed to use one of the USB-C ports and convert that into an Ethernet port to actually connect it to the internet to install updates and then therefore install the drivers. Uh, same thing here with this little Sabrent dongle. Uh, you can't see it, but I believe there are three USB-A ports and a USB-C port. So when doing all of this and using all these peripherals, it, I ran out, of, ran out of ports on the laptop. So uh, I needed to use this to plug some of these peripherals in. You'll see two iFixit toolkits. You don't really need to. Uh, I think I just started with this one and then realized, oh, this one doesn't have everything. So then I went and got the one that had more bits. Uh, I'm using, I, I needed to use a wired mouse and wired keyboard because the built-in keyboard and trackpad both did not work uh, upon the initial boot up screen uh, to start the installation process. Uh, and then of course you'll need the new drive and I'm using this Western Digital Black what, SN77M. Uh, so far it's, it's fine. I mean, I haven't really done too much with it uh, as of recording this video, so hopefully it, it lasts a long time. Uh, my only real complaint when it comes to this installation uh, is something I've complained about in the past, and that's the fact that the SSD form factor that they're installing in these these newer laptops. There are the, the shorter boys, so the 2230 as opposed to the 2280. I have plenty of 2280s that I have just laying around that I would have used, but no, this is my first time buying the 2230, and I'm a little bothered, but I said, hey, you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, that's the route that a lot of these companies are going. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'll start the video. And of course, the last thing that I, uh, I didn't mention over here is just power. Make sure that you, you plug it in because you don't want it dying midway through installation. All right, now, uh, I'm talking over this. I did this yesterday and I just set up a camera. I didn't want to talk while I was doing it because it just didn't feel like it. So it was a quiet day. I've stripped the audio from the actual recording and we're just going to go ahead and watch it. And I'll talk to explain what I'm doing. <laughs> So, uh, first thing we have here are there were four rubber feet on the bottom of the laptop. Uh, I've already re removed three of the rubber feet, uh, and underneath those rubber feet are screws. So, let's go ahead and uh, watch myself remove this last one. Be careful. Uh, fortunately, they weren't too difficult to get up. They, they were not glued down, so that's nice, I guess, for Microsoft to not make it so we have to rip things off. All right, and use your little pry tool up at the top. Fortunately, and I'll show it at some point, uh, once you remove the screws, the only thing that's holding the bottom panel in place are some magnets. Uh, so lifting it up was relatively easy once I realized oh yeah just start at the top and, and, and just kind of pry it from from there uh, next thing that I'm going to have to do is disconnect the battery and uh, I, I could have googled and I didn't but when I see uh, those numbers uh, 3-1-P I think or 3 I, I I don't know what it means but I just know hey that's where the battery is let me go ahead and find the correct bit which I believe I end up showing as, I don't know, a T something. 
So to remove the battery, I end up using what? I think that says T2. Yeah, so that's the bit that I'm going to use to disconnect the battery cable right there. So the battery cable has been disconnected. And now, uh, while doing all this, I've, I've been preparing my Windows installation media. Just downloaded the media creation tool uh, and then plugged in my flash drive using another computer. Um, and then did and followed through uh, and then went through uh, the, those steps. And there's our little drive and even though at the beginning of the video I complained and I still stand by it uh, I mean it's evident now that looking inside the machine that there's just not a lot of space so creating space to have a 2280 drive just might not be practical uh, I mean I will say on the right side of the battery there there's just nothing there so I maybe we could have put something on that side I don't know but all that to say I'm just complaining now to remove the drive I believe yes I used the T4 to remove that little securing screw and there's a piece of tape on top of the drive uh, while going through the process I didn't immediately see that somehow I think it was the angle I was sitting at but I'm like oh look yeah that's a piece of tape maybe you should uh, maybe you should address that all right uh, the drive has been removed and I am going to open the other box and install the new drive. And we will reconnect the battery and then put the bracket back on top. And yeah, I'm just showing that uh, the magnets that I mentioned earlier, those are what are holding uh, the the lid in place. In addition to the four screws, in addition to the four screws that we will uh, reattach after I confirm that the thing is actually working. And, and at this point, sorry that it's blurry, but I realized that that nothing works. So the trackpad doesn't work, keyboard doesn't work. So I'm going to have to go get those wired peripherals that I referred to at the beginning. There's my wired mouse. And at this point, if I had the drivers, I could have loaded them, but I didn't. So I just went ahead and, and finished the installation. And we are now finished. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, nothing works in terms of the peripherals, uh, well, the, the onboard ones. So 
for the duration of installation I used everything that I showed at the beginning of the video uh, and you might have to do the same thing unless you choose to load the drivers prior to uh, actually installing Windows itself.